Hi, everyone. It's me. Yes. <sighs> Your favorite widow, right? It is Thursday. Yes. Throwback Thursday. Ooh, October 27th, 2022. Time. I don't know about anybody else time seems to be on warp speed lately seriously but anyway that's for another day today we're gonna fan through the through my big one my journal and we're gonna fan through it like as we do always on this series and uh, see how much I can recall on that day and through the eyes of my more healed and mature thoughts and, um, and eyes, uh, give some wisdom to that moment. And um, also let's remember why do we, why do I um, go back, you know, why is a throwback Thursday important? And the motivation behind this series on my channel is to address something that happens more often than I can even count. Whenever I'm speaking or um, talking to you know a group and I tell them that I was... I want to say this started early, probably around my eighth year after my husband transitioning. People would ask, how do I get to where you are now? You know, how did you get through this and this, the children, the attacks and the fear factor, the uh, physical uh, manifestations of, you know, of, of grieving or, or, or they had things uh, as uh, as simple as how do I get to the next day, you know? And as time, you know, goes on, I still continue to get those questions. I'm in year 11. And uh, lately it has been more of why are you still here? <laughs> And one second, you all. And to address that, why am I still here? Because I feel a sense of accountability on, on, on many levels and helping others through their bereavement journey, through their grief journey. And there is a difference. People don't understand. There, not it's not a major difference, depending on who you ask, between bereavement and grief. And you know, I'll just maybe I'll do a video about that. Um, and that's something that when you're in grief support groups, especially bereavement centered um, grief support groups, we talk about that. So um, I don't want to bring up any new ideas or new thoughts too much now in this series, but as now that I think about it, I may just do that. But once again, the motivation uh, for a Throwback Thursday is to let each one of you know that I was there where you were. See, in this book are tears, heartache, I mean some major anger stuff too recorded in its raw emotions by me over 11 years i actually have two this this is the the first one i picked up when i i just went in when my husband passed away and the second one is more recent one has a lot of stuff and that's that's this one but anyway i want you to understand that during these moments I could not see through past the emotion. I didn't, in some instances, and I'm not talking about just one time, one day. I could not see past the heartache. 
Okay. Hold on one second, you guys. All right. I apologize, you all, for that. Um, but yeah, <sighs> let's let's just say that the motivation behind this is to let you know that I get it. And although it's been 11 years and it seems like <laughs> some people feel like I should not. Well, I take that back. Some groups feel like when I say groups, I said some of the members are like, hey, well, I think you should be past your grieving journey and uh, no longer participating in these meetings. And it's funny because I get I receive more email requests like. Uh, to come and speak uh, at uh, bereavement um, events than I do people watching my YouTube channel. Go figure, right? <laughs> but I greatly enjoy it because adult people may feel like um, I am teaching them something. No, y yes, because I want this journey, this heartfelt journey, this painful but yet sweet journey will be a roadmap a survival kit for anyone else that goes through the grief and the bereavement journey okay and um to help give you motivation because one thing that i can say that those first few years like i've always said i did not myself professional counseling i figured i could do this on my own I'll take this journey head on. I can do this. You know. This is nothing. I can do it. But every day it was just it was just me suppressing my emotion on top of it. And just like a a, a boil or like I always said, pressure inside a galvanized pipe. After a while, psh, it's going to erupt. And it's going to cause some major damage. And it did in 2018 for me. I ended up in the hospital, okay? I don't want that for you all. I have four children that I adore, okay? And I want to be an active part of their lives. So unfortunately, it took that to trigger a, a positive and healthy response on my part, okay? Because as with any type of therapeutic healing if the recipient do not want to receive it you can put them there you can force them to go but healing would not take place and until they are unfortunately sometimes broke down to the point where they want it for themselves and when that happens their heart and their mind is open to receiving but at the same time you're open to releasing and that's one of the things that I couldn't deal with in the beginning. One by anger was my husband died suddenly from an illness that I just like, what, what are you kidding me? You know? So that sent me into this whirlwind of anger that I had no one to, you know, direct that frustration and that anger to, you know? So as a Christian, I suppress my heartache and my disdain and my anger toward God. I was mad, you know. But over the years, and you know, like I said, things are about to um, open up for you. Don't go through that. So allow me to share with you. I know it's been 11 years, and look, I'm able to smile. It's been some years. If you all even look at some of my videos, my very first videos, I was not as cheery. I, 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 from time to time, I'll stroll through just so I can see progress in myself and the way that I present myself, the way that I speak and I smile and the, the glow in my eyes. And I was like, wow, I have... I, I am in a different place. I see progress. And I thank God for that. Okay. The same God that I was mad at in 2011 for suddenly taking my husband from an illness that I did not know could transition somebody. 
you know, to send them off into the ethers, to send them to the other side, you know? So all I'm saying is, take what I'm saying with your open heart and your open mind. But I ask when you watch this series, like I've always said, do it when you're on a heal, a healthy healing journey. Because you don't want to stay here. When I go here, I don't stay. Okay? No, 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 no. That's why we all do this once a week. And this is only, like I said, just to remind you that you will get through this. This is fact. These are my... Excuse me, my what uh what do they say? These are my receipts. I have receipts. Okay? You will get through it. So feel what you see, you're feeling. Honor what you're feeling. Honor what you're thinking. Right? But if you're thinking about anything that causes harm of any type to yourself or to anyone else, you pick up your phone and you get some help. You call a family member. You call a trusted friend, or better yet, you call 911 in the U.S. And in some uh, municipalities, you can call 211 as well. And they will get you the help that you need. You deserve it. All right? Your family love and deserve you. Friends love and deserve you. You're here for a reason, for a purpose. All right? I always remember that. And if nobody else said they need your love... I love you. And I, okay. And, and I'm telling the truth. So do that. And if you need a form of release, because one of the reasons I started this YouTube channel, because I was in a place where I was still healing and I was in therapy and I needed something. And let me tell you something. When you give, it does something to the soul and something to the heart. And I said, I remember saying, well, I don't have anything to give. You know, I did some volunteer work and I've always done that even when my husband was living. Right. But I needed something more specific to my healing, my, my bereavement grief journey. And my oldest daughter, who was a senior in college at the time, um, suggested mom do the YouTube channel. And I was like, what? I don't want people to know it. You know, just all in my business. I, I, I don't see myself being that vulnerable. And then it came to me one, one evening. And one of the things I wish I would have had during my grief journey when I was doing it on my own in a way is to know that somebody that was going through it just like me who will say the things like, I'm mad at God right now. You know, I don't, you know, that's honest. Okay. But they're saying it things not to, to vent or to rent, but they're saying it. And then right after they say these things about their raw emotions and how they think and feel, they come back and say, Hey, I know what that felt like, but this is what I did to get through it. They give me a solution. So not only was, is this channel created and, and motivated by um, sharing my experiences, but I want to give you a solution to them as well. You are not supposed to leave my videos with just you knowing my business, okay? You're supposed to leave my videos knowing my heartache or my sorrow, whatever I'm showing in that particular uh, video. But in that video... I give you a solution to that issue, how to get through it, and encouragement that you will get through it, and proof that you will get through it because, heck, I'm recording about it, all right? So, darn, that's a really long introduction. So, I guess it was needed for someone, so enjoy, and we're going to fan, fan the trusted book, okay? Uh, let's see. Ugh. And I'm not going to look. I'm just going to fan. And I came across. Well, this is one of right in, so I won't do that yet. I'll do those like on a separate one. Oh, wow. How many pages is this? Because I don't want to take up. 
Oh, it's a one pager again. This one, you all, is dated January 29th, 2011 at 8.51 a.m. Okay. I'll read it. And a lot of times I, I try not to um, mention my husband's name because uh, I had uh, quite a few people in the comments try to make it sound like they know me and and, and they don't. Um, so <laughs> I, I don't and I definitely don't mention my children's name. So if I uh, if it sounds like there's a gap or something like that or I say he or she. Uh, to the best of my ability, I'll try to connect, you know, my pronouns uh, properly, okay, in place of their names. All right. So, January 29th, 2011. This was actually six days after my husband passed away. Yeah, because he died on um, January 23rd of 2011. All right, here I go. Today, I read my Bible and daily word. I have not done this since... My husband died. Romans 14, 8 has given me some comfort. Comfort. Dr. Stanley, which was my pastor at the time, he's retired at First Baptist Atlanta, FBA, um, states that on page 12, I'm sorry, 1326 of his Life Principle Bible that, I quote, everything we do should reflect well on the Savior, ellipses, even the way we die should witness to the goodness of Jesus Christ, end quote. I think of how my husband died, all the moments that led or preceded his death. One, he came home from work and watched the Green Bay Packers secure his spots at the Super Bowl. My husband loves Green Bay, and he did. He really did. Two, he ate dinner with his, with, I'm sorry, he ate dinner with the kids and joked around with them. He loved to do that. <laughs> oh my goodness, did he? He loved to cook and he really enjoyed the children more than anything, you guys. I, you know, just real quick, I had a really gem of a man. When I mean gem, I mean a rare, rare, um, Gem, G E M. Okay, it was wow. But anyway, we go on. Three. He lovingly requested that I get off the step ladder. I remember that. I was pregnant at the time, and I was on bed rest, so I overheard the laughter in the kitchen because I was laying down. So I wobbled from all the way from the other side of the house to uh, the kitchen and over the breakfast bar I saw everybody was just talking so I because you know I'm not vertically challenged or anything like that but in a way I can't reach all the way up to the <laughs> to the cabinets so my husband uh, many years prior to bought me a little step stool for the kitchen so I get on my little step stool and I remember um, getting up there because I didn't want to interfere with them um, talking, and I remember him looking at me, and he was like, babe, get down. I'll get that for you. And I was like, no, you're sitting down at, at the dinner table, but as he was talking, he walked his way around the breakfast bar into the kitchen, and got the glass down and helped me down off the ladder. Yeah, that was him. Okay. Four, he went to the bedroom to watch another football game, on the flat screen and relax. Five, he called his mom around 7.30. Six, he died watching sports, relaxing in bed, in his t-shirt and boxers. My husband died by the hands of the Lord. If that is not a blessing, I don't know what is. I pray that I remember how blessed my husband is by the Lord and so greatly loved by him as well. I pray that my husband knew this. I'm sure he did. Lord, help me to get our kids to see and feel the same thing. Yeah, my children, not just the kids, but all of us was just really to the floor, you guys. It was 
It sends shot waves through every fiber of our being. Even my unborn son, son that was in my womb. Anyway, let me finish. Thank you, Lord, for sharing and showing me your perspective on my husband's death. I love you so much. Amen. And I signed my name. Okay. So if I tear up on this one, kind of, you know, might swell up with tears a little bit because I, I remember this. I can recall this. All right. Because I was so filled with so much confusion, you guys. And my husband was fine. My husband jogged. My husband, we ate healthy. You know, we lived a stress-free life. Really. And boom. Out of nowhere. I find him unresponsive in our bedroom. I couldn't quite put it together. I, I even, in my um, trying to figure it out, trying to make sense of it all, this is what I, this is honest to God truth. I know some people may think it's mental, but hey, this is, this is, this is true. I even felt like it was just a show, right? What I mean by a show, I had put in my mind even it had to stay there so long, it trickled into my heart space. My my husband was in his boxers and his shirt. His, uh, I'm sorry, boxer shorts and a t-shirt. Just sitting back in the bedroom, chilling, watching another football game. I had the children, you know, help me, you know, up in the kitchen and everything like that so he can rest. So... When I found my husband and the paramedics came and they took him off, he had no ID on him or anything, right? And so I'm sitting in the front and they I remember one of the paramedics telling me, I was trying to look to see what they were doing through the little, you know, uh, uh, what do you call those, that little opening between the back and the front of a uh, EMS. And one of the paramedics that was back there was like, Ma'am, you don't want to see what we're doing to you. It is best that you turn around and just look forward. So I took them at their word. I fixated in my mind, right? This is the forensic in me, okay? That just what I do, okay? And I take evidence. But I was creating a story that could, on some level, satisfy my insanity. And my insanity was my extreme heartache, pain, and grief. If, you know, there is, uh, this is a side note. There is this thing, I can't call it, where you can be in so much grief and agony to you, your blood vessels can literally sweat. Your skin can sweat blood. I was there. I can't recall if I, you know, found any blood, but that's how extremely painful this event was not for one day, but it went on for days. And so I was like, hold on. This doesn't even sound right. So I asked to see my husband's body. They wouldn't let me see it. Um, and then of course, the same day that they took us to the hospital, I was asked, I said, No, I need to see his body. And I kept telling her, I said, and I was pitching a fit. I said, I need to see his body because I needed to connect what was going on at the time. It wasn't making any sense. And then boom, my stomach. My son started, I felt this sharp pain in the lower left side of my, and I fell over and it got worse. So they took me up to their uh, maternity ward. All right. So they was like, Miss Johnson, you're just going to have to calm down. And I was just like, mm -mm, that ain't happening, you know? And so, of course, you know, they medicated me. So I remember I kept asking them. Uh, they sent in a um, uh, oh my goodness it's not chancellor I, I can't think of it but you know a preacher within the within the church within the hospital and he was um, you know um, we were talking as much as I could because at this point I'm kind of out of it so I, I remember I can recall asking him like hey can you make a range I need to see his body 
I have to, you guys don't understand. I have to be able to see his body to connect this. Because this doesn't make sense to me. I know. And they, everybody would say, well, this is what the doctor said. I know what the doctor said. I hear, I heard what they said. And it doesn't make any sense. Okay. So everybody was like, well, not right now. Nobody, you know, maybe later. Right. That, that never came. So while I'm in the hospital, I'm sitting there thinking like, hmm, this is what I told myself. Not just told, I convinced myself. Maybe my husband saw some type of, I don't know, um, uh, crime or something, you know, and he's in, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, protective, you know, services or something like that, right? Because none of it, none of this made sense. And I was like, you know, and I even told myself, that makes plenty of sense, right? I said, why did the lady tell me to turn around because she didn't want me to see what they were doing. It wasn't like it was something bad. You know, he hadn't been, she didn't have the cut on him because there was no, you know, uh, foul play or anything like that. I said, I bet you they were uh, switching out bodies and just, you know, recouping him. You know, I came up with all that, you know, giving him some type of resuscitation, but telling him to calm down because his wife isn't here. You know, I had planned all this. I kid you not. I had this plan out. I kid you not. And, I, and then I went into like, I wonder what he saw, when he saw. Maybe he, saw, he discovered something at work because my husband was in upper management. I said, I'm, you know, so I'm all over the place. I'm calling some of his coworkers, asking certain questions. and so, I mean, I was on it. So to those coworkers, <laughs> um, now you know what was going on, okay? If they watch my channel. If they ever come across it, okay, now you know. So that went on for weeks, you guys. I had got to the point where I was literally waiting for, you know, like one of those, one of those little FBI cars, Crown Vicks with the tinted windows with some white man with ugly suit on, you know, come and say, hey, we're about to get, just grab all your only important papers and your children. We're about to take you to your husband. I'm serious. I was there. I was just, and literally, I kid you not, I was waiting. And I was waiting. That Crown Vic with tinted windows did never pull up. Even after I sold the house, like almost a year later, I was still sometimes be like, it would be nice to see that Crown Vic, you know. It's been almost a year. So if anybody was watching us, they should be like um, not watching us as much now. You know, I'm serious, you guys. I kid you not. That was, I was thinking that, sh that stuff. I try not to cut the curse. But I'm getting emotional. But I was. I was there. That day never came, you guys. I never did. So if you <laughs> go down that road and you feel like, okay, am I losing my mind? No. You're just trying to create an out for your emotions. That's all you're doing. And that's all I was doing. I needed to be angry with someone or something. Or I needed another option. Because dealing with my heartache and the pain that I was feeling was not something I was ready to unpack, deal with, feel till its fullest. Because the, I felt like what I was feeling was far too much for anybody to handle. So to feel, to deal with all of it, I was like, mm -mm. my body was like, nope, nope, nope. My mind was like, nope. And at any time, my heart and my mind was in agreement on this one. <laughs> like, uh, this too much. So we're going to create a situation in our thoughts. And then that's going to trickle into our my heart. It's going to give us a little bit of peace and calm. Because dealing with this is just no. We're, we're not there yet. Okay? So no, you're not losing your mind. It's just the mind and the body creating an out. All right. Was it healthy? No. Not at all. Should I have gotten some counseling? Oh, yes. Because that thought process, along with other things that I was thinking, just delayed my joy. And see, the thing is, I talk more about how this affects me. But understand, once my husband transitioned, 
I had become a mother and father like that overnight. So what I was thinking, what I was feeling, I mean, I'm sorry, how I was thinking and the things that I were doing at during this time affected my children, how they responded and how they, they were taking cues from me on how to address and manage their grieving and bereavement. Although they, they were doing theirs way better than me because I got them into counseling very early. Good friend, um, put this together and it was my tools in professional counseling. I, I know less than 30 days after my husband passed away, you know? So looking back at this, I would say one of the core issues, looking through the lens of myself now, 11 years now, um, I've gone through some healthy healing. I've had the um, mental and physical breaks, break, I guess, uh, dissolving of struck of heartache and pain, you know. Um, and I look back at this, I can emp emp empathize with those that are just hurting. I get it. Been there. Okay. And I'm here to tell you on this day, I did not know on January 29, 2011, I did not know I was going to be here October 27th, 2022. 11 years later. And in a few months, 12 years. And still, and, and my heart is intact. I am whole. I am a new creation and I'm okay with that. All right. So you 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 get through this, all right? So back to this entry. So I would say um you know, like I said, one we will create a mental out. And is it okay? No, I'm going to be honest. No, it's not. Um, but do you do it? Heck yeah. So don't be ashamed. I'm telling you, I did it. But I'm telling you now, through the, the lens of me going through healing and professional help, that it's not healthy. You don't want to You don't want to do too much. And you definitely don't want to stay there because although I went through that, it was painful and heartbreaking to know that that crown big with you know these fbi agents to retrieve my children and i to reunite us with my husband never happened so that was another heartache i had to deal with that wasn't even real all right and also i will say from this this entry was such a blessing and um I am really thankful that I invested in many years in my pastor's um, book, um, The Life Principle Bible by Dr. Charles um, Stanley. Um, I think online it was called, was it In Touch Ministries? I think so. But, you know, locally is First Baptist Atlanta. Um, so, but um, like I say, he's retired now. So, but you can always still pick up the book and uh, and enjoy it. Okay. Um, I needed this because, like I said, I didn't understand. And once you get to a point where that, well, for me, once I got to a point where I knew that Crown Big wasn't going to show up, it was anger. Once again, on top of the anger I already had, right? A disappointment in myself that I had created something that wasn't there. So I felt defeated on top of all of that, right? But because I read this and it says, and I'm going to go back to it. And where's my Bible at? I have so many books, you guys. Uh, 
trying to think because I keep my Bible in my office downstairs because that's where I'm aiming at. But anyway, Romans 14, 8. Read it. Um, and like I said, on page 1326 of um, Dr. Charles Stanley's Life Principle Bible, uh, he states, everything we do should reflect well on the Savior. Even the way we die should witness to the goodness of Jesus Christ. And I needed that. I needed to know that my husband is okay. That even though I knew he was, I knew my husband. I had a praying husband. We were a praying family, you know. And, but I needed that this, this from someone who knew me from my past. And I was like, that is so true. My husband did everything that he enjoyed before he transitioned. I have the blessing, you all, unlike some, to be able to say that no one on this planet that walked this earth took my husband away from me. It wasn't violence. It wasn't an accident. You know, nothing, you know, nefarious uh, happened to him. Nobody laid a hand on him. No one assisted in his uh, transition. My husband did not initiate his transition. You follow me? My husband literally laid down and he was no more. If that is, for me, that was beautiful. I mean, he wasn't sick or ill prior to his illness. So he wasn't like hospitalized or anything like that. He literally just laid down and crossed over. And I thank God for that because if I, not if, because it's, remember, death is a natural promise for us all. If I have, if, when that day comes, I would love to be able to do some of the most wonderful things that I enjoy. And my husband enjoyed cooking, he enjoyed the children, he enjoyed family. And um, in that, um, he went off. On his own, in his own, excuse me, you guys, I apologize. In his own space, and he laid down. Because he did, my husband type of guy, I truly believe t today that God tapped him on his shoulder and said, hey, your portal opens at such and such time. And because you have, give me a minute, done well job well done what would you like I mean all the way down to his favorite his favorite football team winning a spot to the Super Bowl I know that's what that was Chris well my husband you know And he even left something for me because I would get on him all the time. Like, hey, sometimes just come home and relax, unwind, and, you know, slip into your boxers and your t-shirt. Just sit back, go, you know, go into the room without the children and just chill. I used to tell him that all the time because my husband loved to just hang out. And, you know, he said he was a, a family man. And the one day that... um he transitions. He listens to me. Go figure, right? And I know for a fact that God, you can call God, whoever feeds you spiritually. And for me, it's God. I told him, like, hey, can I want to leave this for my wife. I want to leave this for her. And I'm pretty, and I know for a fact, I was like, 
You can leave it, but she ain't going to see that she's not going to notice any of this until many years later. <laughs> so thank you, God, for your patience and, re and revealing this to me because it brought me so much peace, you guys. So the reason I bring all of this up, I know in your pain and your heartache right now, you don't see it. You, you, you won't see the blessing, regardless of how your loved one transitions. See, our creator do not create anything to destroy us, all right? Not even death. Remember, death is that natural promise that cheer us on to celebrate and love and experience life right now in this moment, in this present moment, all right? So, you're not going to see it. So, yes, you will create these stories in your mind as a way of an out. And unfortunately, some people may do other things as an out to their bodies, to other people. You know, eating was another out for me. I gained so much weight, you guys. I was, I am 5'4". I almost hit 300 pounds. Yeah. I mean, I'm still getting my body back pre, you know, being pregnant with my um, fourth child. Not quite there yet, but I'm getting there. And I look at some of my older videos I showed you, like, I was, you know, I was big. That was the biggest I had ever been in my life, even while pregnant, you know. So I get it. Get the help that you need. And if you go without the help that you need and you go through some experiences, know that you can get through those as well. And forgive yourself. I mean, there's many. Drugs, alcohol, sex. I get it. Because it hurts so bad sometimes that you just need an out. So get the professional help that you deserve. That your family deserve to see you healthy. You deserve to feel healthy. Okay? So if you do go into those places where you create an unhealthy out of all of those emotions... Get the help that you need. Make the decision that you're going to get this help. And that I'm going to help myself and I'm going to open my heart and my mind for healing, cleansing and healing and releasing. Releasing. And forgive yourself. Do you understand me? And throughout all of that therapy, you'll, you'll know what to do next. I'm not here to tell you what to do after that. But all I am here to do is let you know that to validate what you're feeling and to encourage you right here, right now to get you some professional help through this process. Okay? 911. 211 in certain areas or both. A trusted friend, a loving family member, or heck, all of the above. All right? Um, I know during the pandemic, I used, um, better help. Um, so I'll link a link to them as well and other resources as well, um, uh, that offer online and, um, and some are free. A lot of, believe it or not, a lot, I speak, I'm invited. These are not paid and I'm not looking to be, uh, compensated for, for my, attendance to these uh, bereavement or and or grief groups or panels i do this because you don't have to go through this by yourself and two it brings me some healing as well so remember get you some professional help be vulnerable you know, and for me, being vulnerable was very difficult. 
there's this song I heard um uh, my um little brother um who passed away two years ago uh was playing and um and it was at the time I thought it was vulgar, you know. <laughs> But one part just really stuck to me, and it still does sometimes when I feel um, a need to be vulnerable, but yet my pride and um, gets in the way of me doing that. And I just get into, you know what? I know how to dissolve this uh, imposter synd syndrome that's trying to peek up in me. And it's, there's this song, and he said, Elf Everybody in the Club. And I just played that in my mind. And I was just like, and it says, Elf you, Elf you, Elf everybody. Er, I only think they said it. Elf everybody. That's right. Elf them. Because it's about me. My healing. My authenticity. My growth. You know? So, if sitting here on YouTube telling you that doing my first video, I hated God. I was mad as heck. Okay? I was. I would go to church on Sunday and participate in overnight, you know, the children's home. I would do all that. But the thing is, we serve a greater and more powerful God who knows about these feelings and is lovingly sitting and watching over you and is patient with you through this process. All right? Because you will get through it. I am have gotten through it. I am still getting through it. I apologize. You may hear my door. She's home for the weekend. <laughs> Yes, can you believe it? My oldest daughter graduated from college, what, two, three years ago? Was it two? Oh my goodness, I can't remember. My baby girl is a junior in college. She's about to eat everything in the house and stuff a book bag and duffel bag with all my other groceries <laughs> when she leaves. But anyway, I just, you can hear, I just heard her come in and it, the boys were just making a lot of noise. But enjoy life right now. All right, get the help that you so desperately deserve. Do you hear me? And give back. Start a YouTube channel. Go to, you know, if my thing is this, when it comes to being vulnerable, some people will say, how can you share that? And see, FBA is a really big church. How could you say that? You know, so many, so many people are heard, you know, you 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 talk about this and you were so raw and honest about it and i eventually got to the point where you know what they don't define who i am right and then on top of that if anything if they make some money off of it, they need to make sure they throw me my portion okay other than that they can say whatever they want all right so um basically if everybody Cause it's all about you and your healing, okay? All right. So I'm not gonna hold you up. This one went kind of long, but believe me, it this video is loaded with so much love, honesty, and truth. Cause that's all I do, and it's for your healing, for to help you feel your toolkit, your survival manual of sorts and to encourage you that you will get through this and i gave you some steps in which you can get some professional help continue to journal don't forget my books hold on <laughs> you know um and you want to make sure that you be real with yourself all right and all of these are available on, on Amazon and locally at Medu Bookstore here in Atlanta. So here is one. Okay. There we are. And that's um, the activity book that we uh, all went to. 
and and this is also my the journal okay you see how big this thing is so it really captures a lot of your words now um my widow journal remember i tell you it, this is about really digging deep all right into while we're going through what we're going through it really helps you think and clear up your thoughts and it let me take that back not so much clear up depending on where you are in your journey but help settle the dust somewhat okay and as you go through this this particular book and i'll show the other one as well it helps bring fragments closer together the more you use it all right and when that happens everything itself clears up all right so check this out as well okay and this is what i use on a daily basis i know you see the fingerprints because i use this every day and i actually use this as well because this one fits in my purse you know because i still journal, i still get emotional you know i just did a, a lot of accomplish a lot of goals that i set when my husband was living and honestly this is just me telling you the truth being vulnerable again it seems like the more and more goals that i accomplish that i discuss with my husband i feel more and more distant from him you know and that's something that i am working through in therapy as well you know it's been 11 years. I haven't dated. I have been celibate. <laughs> it just, I have no interest. But at the same time, I have to live. And I wrap myself around, you know, finishing graduate school. I started my own business. Um, I finished up these four books, raising my children, budgeting and doing t speaking engagements and things like that. And taking classes, you know, to make sure that my business is uh, operating the way I would want it to be and, and things like that. So I, I kept myself busy accomplishing goals. Like I said, um, that I was going to do when my husband was living. And it was like every one of them. I would cut a string. It was like a string was detaching me from him. And on some levels, you guys, I feel like the next thing that's on my list is going to be the one that really just, uh, and I'm going to be like, I don't know if I want to do it. Although I want to accomplish, I have already started on that goal. But once it's completed, I know that there's going to be this feeling of, I don't know, in my heart, I feel like detached, you know. And on some levels, I still want to hold on to this element of attachment that I have to him. And so, hey, that's why I tell you, don't put a time limit on it, you know, because all of us are different and we're on different journeys and we have you know, different ideals and, and, and cultures and, um, and thought, you know, um, processes and things like that. So the one thing I do know is get you some professional help to work through it. It will make you a whole, make life so much lighter. I love you all. And like I said, don't forget the books. Hold on, let me pull this one up. Planning and living. All right. Till the next time. Peace.